Hi everybody, this is Ms. Julia, and um, the video you're about to watch today is about the genre of historical fiction. And I just wanted to take a second and explain what we mean by historical fiction. It's not all old, it wasn't all books that were written a long time ago, although it can be. Um, but instead, it's a story that happened in the past at a definite point in time. So in today's books, um, or rather the books in today's video, you are going to find stories that range from hundreds of years ago um, to stories that happened in the 1990s. So keep in mind um, as you listen along that it also can include all kinds of stories, every genre romances and mysteries and adventures, um, tales that are sometimes quite serious, and others that are just kind of lighthearted fun. Um, historical fiction covers a lot, um, but again, it's just stories that were set in a particular time. Deadly by Julie Chabarro. A mysterious outbreak of typhoid fever is sweeping New York City, and Prudence Galuski isn't quite like the other girls. She is fascinated by how the human body works and why it fails. With a stroke of luck, she lands a position in a laboratory where she is swept into an investigation of the fever that is fated to change medical history. Prudence quickly learns that an inquiry of this proportion is not confined to the lab. From ritzy mansions to shady bars and rundown tenements, she explores every potential cause of the disease. But there's no answer in sight until the volatile Mary Mallon emerges. Dubbed Typhoid Mary by the press, Mary is an Irish immigrant who has worked as a cook in every home the fever has ravaged. Strangely, though, Mary hasn't been sick a day in her life. Is the accu accusation against her an act of discrimination? Or is she the first clue in a new scientific discovery? Prudence is determined to find out. In a time when science was only for men, could the city's future rest with its most unlikely scientist? Kane Warriors by Alex Weedle. Kane Warriors is a fictionalized story of the true event known as Tacky's War that took place in Jamaica in 1760, an event that we are almost never taught about. The story begins as Moa is awoken in the middle of the night by one of the rebels, who informs him that the revolt will begin on Easter Sunday. Moa's father does not like the idea of his son joining the rebellion, but his mother gives Moa her blessing. Together, Moa and his 16-year-old best friend, Keverton, take up arms, learning about brotherhood, courage, faith, and sacrifice along the way. The author's brilliant storytelling and characterization vividly brings to life the issues pain and power structure of the era, along with the hopes and dreams of people. In writing the story, Weedle's meticulous and extensive research evokes the stories and legends passed down by word of mouth over the centuries. The Good Braider by Terry Farish. Set in the 1990s, this story is told in free verse laced with unforgettable images. Viola sings out the story of her family's journey from war-torn Sudan to Cairo, Egypt, and finally to Portland, Maine. Here, in the sometimes too close embrace of the southern Sudanese community, she dreams of South Sudan while she tries to navigate the strange world of America. A world where a girl can wear a short skirt, get a tattoo, or even date a boy. A world that puts her into sharp conflict with her traditional mother, 
who, like Viola, is struggling to braid together the strands of a displaced life. The author's haunting novel is not only a riveting story of escape and survival, but the universal tale of a young immigrant's struggle to build a life on the cusp of two cultures. An Assassin's Guide to Love and Treason by Virginia Boker. When Lady Catherine's father is killed for being an illegally practicing Catholic, she discovers treason wasn't the only secret he was hiding. He was also involved in a murder plot against the reigning monarch, Queen Elizabeth I. With nothing left to lose, Catherine disguises herself as a boy and travels to London to fulfill her father's mission. And to take it one step further, she's going to kill the queen herself. Catherine's opportunity comes in the form of William Shakespeare's newest play, which is to be performed in front of Her Majesty. But what Catherine doesn't know is that the play is not just a play. It's actually a plot to root out insurrectionists and destroy the rebellion once and for all. The mastermind behind this ruse is Toby Ellis, a young spy for the Queen with secrets of his own. When Toby and Catherine are cast opposite each other as the play's leads, they find themselves inexplicably drawn to one another. But the closer they grow, the more precarious their positions become. And soon they learn that star-crossed love, mistaken identity, and betrayal are far more dangerous off the stage than on. The Fire Horse Girl by Kay Honeyman. Jade Moon is a fire horse, which is viewed as the worst sign in the Chinese zodiac for girls. It's said to make them stubborn, willful, and far too imaginative. But while her family despairs of marrying her off, she has a passionate heart and powerful dreams and wants only to find a way to make them come true. Then a young man named Sterling Promise comes to their village to offer Jade Moon and her father a chance to go to America. While Sterling Promise's smooth manners couldn't be more different from her own impulsive nature, Jade Moon falls in love with him on the long voyage. But America in 1923 doesn't want to admit many Chinese. And when they are detained at Angel Island, the Ellis Island of the West, Jade Moon discovers a betrayal that destroys all her dreams. To get into America, much less survive there, Jade Moon will have to use all her stubbornness and will break a new path, one as brave and dangerous as only a fire horse girl can imagine. Loving vs. Virginia, a documentary novel of the landmark civil rights case by Patricia Ruby Powell. This novel in verse is based on a true story. In 1955, in Carolyn County, Virginia, Amidst segregation and prejudice, injustice and cruelty, two teenagers fell in love. Their life together broke the law, but their determination would change it. Richard and Mildred Loving were at the heart of a Supreme Court case that legalized marriage between races. And it is, this is a story of a devoted couple who faced discrimination, fought it, and won. The Fountains of Silence by Rutia Septis. Madrid, Spain, 1957. Under the fascist dictatorship of General Francisco Franco, Spain is hiding a dark secret. Meanwhile, tourists and foreign businessmen flood into Spain under the welcoming promise of sunshine and wine among them is 18-year-old Daniel Matheson, the son of an oil tycoon, who arrives in Madrid with his parents, hoping to connect with the country of his mother's birth through the lens of his camera. Photography and fate introduce him to Anna, 
whose families interweaving obstacles reveal the lingering grasp of the Spanish Civil War, as well as chilling definitions of fortune and fear. Daniel's photographs leave him with uncomfortable questions amidst shadows of danger. He is backed into a corner of difficult decisions to protect those he loves. Lives and hearts collide, revealing an incredibly dark side to the sunny Spanish city. The Awakening of Malcolm X by Alyasha Shabazz. No one can be at peace until he has his freedom. In Charlestown prison, Malcolm Little struggles with the weight of the past. Plagued by nightmares, Malcolm drifts through days, unsure of his future. Slowly, he befriends the other prisoners and writes to his family. He reads all the books in the prison library, joins their debate team, and the Nation of Islam. Malcolm grapples with race, politics, religion, and justice in the 1940s. And as his time in jail comes to an end, he begins to awaken, emerging from prison more than just Malcolm Little. Now he is Malcolm X. Here is an intimate look at Malcolm X's young adult years as told by his daughter, Ilyasha Shabazz, along with award-winning author, Tiffany D. Jackson. Concrete Rose by Andrew Thomas. This story is a prequel to Andrew Thomas's best-selling book, The Hate You Give. If there is one thing 17-year-old Maverick Carter knows, it's that a real man takes care of his family. As the son of a former gang legend, Mav does that the only way he knows how, dealing for the King Lords. With his money, he can help his mom, who works two jobs while his dad is in prison. Life's not perfect, but with a fly girlfriend and a cousin who always has his back, Mav's got everything under control. Until that is, Maverick finds out he's a father. Suddenly, he has a baby, Seven, who depends on him for everything. But it's not so easy to sling dope, finish school, and raise a child. So when he's offered a chance to go straight, he takes it. In a world where he's expected to amount to nothing, maybe Mav can prove he's different. But when King Lord blood runs through your veins, you can't just walk away. Loyalty, revenge, and responsibility threaten to tear Mav apart, especially after the brutal murder of a loved one. He'll have to figure out for himself what it really means to be a man. The Magnolia Sword, a Ballad of Mulan by Sherry Thomas. It's China, and the year is 484. All her life, Mulan has trained for one purpose, to win the duel that every generation in her family must fight. If Mulan prevails, she can reunite a pair of priceless heirloom swords separated decades earlier and avenge her father, who was paralyzed in his own duel. Then a messenger from the emperor arrives, demanding that all families send one soldier to fight the Rorin invaders in the north. Mulan's father cannot go. Her brother is just a child. So Mulan ties up her hair, takes up her sword, and joins the army as a man. Thanks to her martial arts skills, Mulan is chosen for an elite team under the command of the princeling, the royal duke's son, who is also the handsomest man she's ever met. But the princeling has secrets of his own, which explode into Mulan's life and shake up everything she knows. As they cross the Great Wall to face the enemy beyond, Mulan and the princeling must find a way to unwind their past, unmask a traitor, and uncover the plans for the Roran invasion before it's too late. 
The Snow Fell Three Graves Deep by Alan Wolf. In 1846, a group of emigrants bound for California face a choice. Continue on their planned route or take a shortcut into the wilderness. 89 of them opt for the untested trail, a decision that plunges them into danger and desperation and finally the unthinkable. From extraordinary poet and novelist Alan Wolf comes a riveting retelling of the ill-fated journey of the Donner Party across the Sierra Nevadas during the winter of 1846 to 1847. Brilliantly narrated by multiple voices, including a world-weary, taunting, and all-knowing hunger itself. This novel in verse examines a notorious chapter in history from various perspectives. Among them, caravan leaders George Donner and James Reed, Donner's scholarly wife, two Miwok Indian guides, the Reed children, a 16-year-old orphan, and even a pair of oxen. Unprecedented in its detail and sweep, this haunting epic raises stirring questions about moral ambiguity, hope and resilience, and hunger of all kinds. The Poetry of Secrets by Cambria Gordon. Isabel Perez carries secrets with her every day. As a young woman in 1481 in Trujillo, Spain, Isabel should be overjoyed that the alguacil of the city wants to marry her. She is supposed to be flattered, especially because she and her family are converted Jews that have been forced to practice Catholicism, which leaves them low in the hierarchy of the new Spanish order. But although she can't tell anyone, Isabel only has eyes for Diego Altamirano, a young nobleman whose family would never let him court Isabel. So for now, Isabel sneaks out to attend poetry readings. She longs to one day be a famous poet, another secret wish that may never come true. But Isabel's most dangerous secret is this. Though the Perez's claim to be newly converted Christians, they still practice Judaism in the refuge of their own home. When the Spanish Inquisition reaches Trujillo, they are determined to punish the Jews. Isabel finds herself in more danger than she could ever have imagined. Amidst the bloodshed and intolerance, she and Diego will have to fight for their lives in a quest to truly be free. Thanks for joining me for another book chat. Um, I just want to make a note that I am aware that there's a good chance I may have mispronounced um, some of the names of places or um, different people from different cultures. Um, and you have my apologies for that. Um, definitely not an expert in all things. Um, but I am glad that you joined me. And if you feel like talking about any of these books anytime, just get in touch. Thanks and happy reading.